Hello, and welcome to Return of the Natives 2, an interdisciplinary showcase celebrating young local creative talent. I would like to start by thanking the 20 artists who have submitted work to me over the last couple of months. It's been absolutely incredible seeing all of your diverse skill sets flooding in, and I can't wait to share them with everyone over the next three weeks. The first Return of the Natives exhibition was in 1998. It was a visual arts exhibition featuring work from artists such as PJ Harvey. This Return of the Natives exhibition is a continuation of that tradition. Now, even though the doors of the Art Centre are closed, as you can see, our Allsop Gallery is brimming with life. I invite you now to come and explore this incredible visual arts exhibition with me. First up, we have Benji Jackson, who is an illustration student at Bristol UE. While Benji has a very interdisciplinary approach to his illustration, when he comes home he likes to explore more traditional landscapes and townscapes, as you can see behind me. Benji works mostly with acrylics, using palette knives to create this amazing sense of movement. Um, he depicts mostly golden hour scenes, which is that beautiful time at the end of the day when everything is sort of like egg washed, so it's, yeah, it's like really warm and, 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 and beautiful. I just love that he depicts these places which sort of um, for local people evoke such emotion like the woodlands and our town centre. Next up we have Theodora Brazier. Thea is a mural artist and figurative painter. She works mostly in acrylics and oils and her work is concerned with the expression of joy and the journey towards it. Thea often uses really vibrant colours in her work. Um, her paintings often depict natural forms, often the human form. Um, the subjects of her paintings are completely unconcerned with the viewer. This gives them a real sense of tranquility and serenity quite often, I find. Um, I feel like you kind of get transported to this quiet place where the subjects are residing. For instance, this guy at the back of the bus, like, who wouldn't love to be him? Next up, we have the rather explosive work of Imogen Nalen, who left the Thomas Hardy School last year in 2020 and has continued to create through visual art, music, dance and sign writing. Imi's use of colour draws inspiration from the Fauvist movement, particularly Omre Matisse. Um, she uses her work as a way to de-stress and unwind, and you can just see Imi's personality flowing across her canvases. Um, and that's one of the things I love most about her work is such a sort of expression of self. Imi's such a vibrant, articulate, colourful person. Um, and her work is, yeah, really a representation of that. Next up, we have the intricate typography work of Anya Jackson. Anya grew up in Waytown. She has just finished studying photojournalism and photography, but has always enjoyed drawing and illustration. Anya's attention to detail is absolutely incredible. Each one of these must take hours and hours to complete. 
I also love how each one has words that are completely intrinsic to both the subject matter and the person that they're being made for. Next up, we have my work. Hi, I'm Bryony Morsey Sullivan, and I am a puppet maker and puppeteer. I am a graduate from the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. I graduated with a degree in puppetry, and at the core of my practice is giant walkabout puppetry. Walkabout puppets are giant single manipulator puppets, like the two that you can see either side of me. These guys are a work in progress. These giant crazy birds are the second generation of this concept of puppet. Um, the first set I made in my living room in London um, and they were a lot more scrappy, a lot more heavy and the sort of the streamlining of the design um, came through me sort of understanding the materials better but also through the training that I gained in my final year. These two puppets have a lot more mechanism than the previous two um, and hopefully will move a lot more organically as well. Um, but yeah, you'll have to wait and see for my personal video. I will be giving a demonstration of um, moving and performing inside one of these puppets um, and talking a bit more about how I constructed them. This next beautiful series is from Grace Crabtree, a graduate of the Ruskin School of Art, Oxford. The two drawings in the series were made on a residency in Lisbon, and then the paintings in the series were made in response to these drawings in February 2020. So you may see influences of Renaissance murals and frescoes in Grace's work. I personally love the sort of fragmented narrative that you get and the repetitions, it sort of feels like there's some sort of story that she's trying to unpick through the continued exploration of the same subject. Um, and I think it'll be very exciting to hear Grace talk more about her work. Next we have Boris Halvig. Boris is a photographer, writer and filmmaker. Boris has a passion for the analogue process using aged lenses, film emulsions and anachronistic subjects. Boris's photography work often explores quite timeless rural themes, at least in this series which I believe is called Seasonal Blues. Each of the photographs hold often a single subject and they seem to have a huge amount of backstory and narrative it's the sort of imagery that you can get lost in, even if it is a little melancholic. This next series of emotive landscapes is the work of Jessie Wybrew. Jessie is in her third year studying fine art. At the core of her practice is painting, printmaking and photography. Jessie's work is often large-scale mixed media, using oil, acrylic, um, found materials and ink. Jessie often works in the landscape and I think you can really get a feeling of that when you look at her paintings. I particularly like this piece where she's used the ferns to print on top of the landscape. we have the beautifully haunting work of Daisy Rippman. Daisy is a self-taught artist from Mausel. Daisy has pursued a freelance career in Europe doing film, photography, visual art and music. Daisy's highly intuitive work is often influenced by music and you can see that she's a musician herself in her work, I definitely think.
I personally love how surrealist and dreamscape-esque her work is um, and I would love to have one of these pieces. And last, but by no means least, we have this striking and emotive series by Ella Squirrel. Ella graduated in 2018 from the Falmouth School of Art. Her practice centres around painting, but she also works as a photographer, filmmaker and performer. I find Ella's work really captivating and intense, often evoking emotions that we would tend to keep hidden day to day. Her work seems to destabilise ideas around identity, looking at gender, race and sexuality. I'm so excited to see where her work goes in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in to that introduction to our visual artists. To hear more from them and about them, tune in at 6pm every evening for the next three weeks. As part of our exciting programme, you can also expect short film screenings from Chasing Cow Productions, Isaac McPherson and George Ayrwicker, musical performances from Ruby Jew, Jonah Corrin, Eve Appleton and Theodore Sudbury, not to mention theatrical contributions from Off Piece Theatre and Harry Lockett, and last but not least, Reuben Squirrel with a new dance film. I hope you enjoy the rest of Return of the Natives. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>